What a perfect opportunity for getting acquainted with East European wooden architecture. As usually at this point, I have a very vague idea of the design. However, crooked roofs always add some fairy tale touch, so I'll stick with this idea. So far, I'm only confident about a front porch with a very characteristic roof that can be found in Eastern Europe. The other element is an octagonal turret with an onion dome. Yes, an onion dome is an official name, even though the shape supposedly symbolizes a candle's flame. The turret is round, but a circle is just the beginning of drawing an octagon. I divided the circle quickly into four parts, and then each of these parts was halved. To make the roof more interesting and the attic bright and cozy, I'm adding a roof window. The motif of an onion section crowning the porch could also be a good fit for this window. Weird funny chimney is also important, as the story goes there is a huge stove inside. The top of the chimney can resemble a witch's hat even though Baba Yaga usually wears headscarves. Railings are only on sides of the porch to enable convenient parking there. Lastly, the must-have of Baba Yaga's house, a hen's leg. Kind of deformed, but I'll take care of it later. Opinions are divided whether there should be one or two legs, but in stories I heard as a child there was just one leg. Let's get rid of the pencil lines. These delicate lines are a good base for the drawing, but it's just a base. They are way too delicate to just leave them like that. I've got my tried out method of drawing roof tiles. First the roofs reach, then dashed lines, designating rows of tiles. Lastly, short lines or L-shaped lines, separating individual tiles. Such a nice dome deserves an interesting top, like a weather vane with a black cut. I've been thinking about the function of this octagonal turret and preview fits just perfect. Corners can be decorated with pillars. Over the entrance there can be also some decoration. This Baba Yaga clearly has quite a lot of spare time for carpentry. However, there is absolutely no exaggeration regarding the level of decorations and variety of forms. Just google wooden Russian architecture and you will understand that my Baba Yaga is a rather modest person. These planks are a perfect place for decorative motifs, even very simple. To keep the overall design coherent, three or four various motifs can be repeated on different parts of the building. Some of the decors may resemble mystical symbols, mostly kind of chicken footprints here, but there are also mysterious pairs of triangles. Sorry, I tried to keep it simple this time. The bottom line of the porch looks so undecorated. Luckily, it's very easy to change that. Something between geometrical and floral motif would be perfect. 
The porch is supported by quite massive, slightly decorative beams. Shutters are kind of must-have in such buildings. I've noticed a common mistake in drawing shutters, namely that they are often wider than they should. Obviously, each shutter should be just slightly wider than a half of a window, but for some reason they tend to be drawn much wider than that. The space below a windowsill is a perfect place for a carved ornament. The entrance, what can I say, it's mainly hidden under the porch's roof. Nevertheless, there can be a small glazing and the entrance can be covered with these mysterious chicken footprint-like symbols. A bottom belt below windows level can be decorated with some patterns. Above, planks could be set horizontally or vertically and planks on a gable could be set in a different manner, just to diversify a facade. If there is a spot for placing a decorative motif, it should be used. They don't teach you drawing hands legs at the architectural school. I had to google photos of those legs and close-ups were creepy. It's a pity that it's just an ink drawing, as this subject could look really good in color, I mean in many colors, as I don't imagine it as an insignificant brownish wooden house, rather as a quite colorful house astonishing everyone who encountered it in a forest clearing. Getting back to shadowing. If you saw some of my previous videos, there won't be any surprises. Vertical lines as shadow casted by the roof. Diagonal lines on shadowed walls, more intense near the corner. Windows can be very dark. It feels like this time I need a thicker pen to emphasize some lines and areas. Planks that were clearly visible before shadowing now need to be drawn once more. Lastly, don't forget about the shadow casted on the ground. And some important lines I missed. Horizontal lines are shadows casted by railings and poles and shadow on the ground again. I hope that this video inspired you to create your own designs. The next subject will be more complex, but don't worry about that. It's me that should be worried.